All right, we're going to get started. We're going to talk about um, retrosynthesis for the Claisen so we can figure out how to make compounds by Claisen condensation. Anybody have questions for me before we get started? All right. All right, so we're going to take apart, if I give you a compound and I say, show me how you can make this using a Claisen condensation. Um, we had steps to do that with an aldol. We have steps to do this with a Claisen. So here's the steps right here. So we're going to start with, um, start counting from the ester. Because we have two carbonyls here, I encourage you to start counting from the ester. Um, so we have alpha and we have beta if we start counting from the ester. Break the alpha-beta bond. Okay, so that's step two. Add OET to the beta position. That's the OET that we lose when we're doing the Claisen. If you think about the mechanism, that's the OET that we lose. Add the OET to the beta position, put the negative charge in the alpha position. So putting the negative charge in the alpha position lets us know um, where we're making our enolate. So let's draw the two compounds that you would use. That's just a self-condensation, isn't it? So that's going to work really well. So the structural feature that you want to look for is beta keto ester. That would be for classic um, uh, Claisen condensation. where we have an ester um, combining with an ester, but we also have some cross claisins that kind of are marginally claisin, marginally aldol. Um, and so that would be classic claisin or just a 1,3 dicarbonyl. So I may tell you, show me how you make this by claisin, or I may not tell you that's from a claisin. And you should recognize, oh, okay, that's a beta keto ester. I can make that by claisin. And then be able to take it apart and show me how to make that. All right, so let's look at an example here, a target molecule that we're going to try to synthesize here. Following the same steps, start counting from the ester, alpha, beta. Break the alpha, beta bond. Put an, uh, an ethoxy in the beta position or whatever matches the ester that's already there. Negative charge is in the alpha position. So if we take that apart, going to have to be really careful about counting carbons with these guys. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count these carbons as soon as I draw this just to make sure. Because remember, I made a mistake the other day doing this. Same, similar thing. So let's number that. One, two, three, four, five. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So that looks good. So um, if I'm going to make that compound, um, this would be, um, it would have to be an intramolecular reaction. We know that five and six member rings form really easily in an intramolecular reaction. Um, this um, strategy uses an intramolecular clase and condensation. Um, also known as AKA a Diekmann condensation. So in this carbonyl chemistry, we do have a lot of name reactions. So the Diekmann condensation is an intramolecular claisen. 
So what our synthesis would look like, we would not need a directed Clayson at all. This is going to work really well. So let's write out our synthesis in the forward direction. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. So that matches. NaOET, HOET. Ethanol is just the solvent. And, and what, what you should do is when you get home, prove this to yourself. Go through the arrow pushing and make sure that this is what you get. Remember, formation of this uh, deprotonated active methylene compound is what drives the equilibrium. And so then in the second step, you add acid to protonate. Questions on um, that Clayson condensation example? Anybody? So definitely we'll be asked to take apart a Clayson product to show how to make it, just like taking apart an aldol to show how to make it. The, I, I, you should expect both types of problems on this upcoming midterm. All right, let's a unified look at Clayson, uh, look at not Clayson, but any condensation here. We're not going to get too caught up in the names. We've seen examples of condensations using aldehydes and aldehydes, aldehydes and ketones, esters and esters, esters and aldehydes or ketones, and probably we should add ketones and ketones here. I, can't, I think I left out ketones and ketones. So a large variety of reactions are possible between enolate ions and compounds containing carbonyl groups. How do you decide the type of reaction that will occur? Um, you can make this decision by considering four questions. Question number one, uh, is there an enolizable hydrogen atom on one or both of the reactants? Include hydrogens alpha to carbonyl, nitro, um, nitrile, or cyano groups. I guess that would, the nitrile would be the cyano group. I just realized that's a little bit redundant here. But what we're, we're we talking about here? That hydrogen, a pKa about 10. So alpha to an activating group. Alpha to a ketone, pKa about 20. We can also remove um, alpha, uh, the alpha hydrogen from an ester. That is pKa25. All right, so we should consider those. And so you want to keep in mind um, these pKa's so that if you have a mixture of these things, you'll know which is the one that's going to be deprotonated. Okay, so we'll cross out or cyano groups because that's what we're, the nitrile is what we're talking about there for that one. All right, so that's question number one. Look for enolytes that can form. If there are multiple, multiple enolates that can form, you, you're going to probably have a problem with the multiple um, products. Is there a carbonyl that can be attacked by the enolate? And this is where you need to keep in mind reactivity here. So if you think about these guys here. You want to know which is the most reactive carbonyl so that um, you'll make, be able to make good decisions about the products that you will get. So this was material that we covered on uh, midterm one and you know, so things that you're going to have to consider when you're doing uh, midterm two. All right, so is there a carbonyl that can be attacked by the enolate? So you look for that also. 
Hopefully you have, um, if you have a, a crossed clason or a crossed aldol, you have one enolate that can form and then you have the other compound more electrophilic, that means you're going to get a good outcome. Is the carbonyl in the same molecule as the enolate? Um, five or six membered rings form easily. If they're not, if you can't make a five or six membered ring, we don't want to consider that for this class. So four not good, seven not good, eight not good, nine not good. Five and six is what we're, we're, we're looking for. Is the carbonyl attached to a good leaving group? So this is really, um, um, is the carbonyl a type one or a type two? Answering that question is going to be help you to predict whether we get a clason or a clason-like condensation or an aldol or an aldol-like condensation. All right, so if the leaving group is present, if it is a type 2 carbonyl that you're attacking, then you're going to lose the leaving group. So once again, we get to the point where we, we're going to do the attack, we're going to draw the product, we're going to look at the tetrahedral intermediate and see if it has a leaving group. So all of those skills that we've been uh, working all quarter all pay off and come back into play in this chapter here. So we're attacking the carbonyl. That is a type 1 carbonyl, so we do have a leaving group. And so what that means is that leaving group is going to leave. And if you're attacking a type um, 2 carbonyl that has a leaving group, that's going to be a clason or, or a clason-like condensation. So, of course, there's our leaving group. <coughs> All right, so electrons and oxygen are going to come down to kick off the leaving group. And then don't forget the last step of this mechanism. This is going to be our clason or clason like. This, is, this one here is pure clason. Um, remember the last step, we're going to deprotonate that active methylene position that we just created. And um, that's going to drive the equilibrium to the right. Have to have that key step in order to drive the equilibrium. All right, so again, key point here, reaction driven to completion by formation of the stabilized um, enolate. All right, so that's what happens if you attack a, um, a type, type 2 carbonyl. So this is a type 2. If you attack a type 1, then you're not going to get clason because in the clason, we need to kick off a leaving group. Um, in the aldol, you don't kick off a leaving group. We're, what we're doing in the aldol is um, protonating and then possibly eliminating, making that decision. So here's our enolate. This time we're going to attack an aldehyde. We draw our tetrahedral intermediate and then we make decisions about what's going to happen next. All right, so we don't have a leaving group. The only leaving group we have is for the reaction to work, reverse itself and do a retro aldol. We're looking at those in discussion this week. Um, that's, but as far as a leaving group that's going to be a productive pathway that's not going to go right back to starting materials, uh, we don't have a leaving group. So, um, so uh, no leaving group. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do protonation and then depending on the conditions, uh, potentially elimination.
So whether you, whether you eliminate is going to depend on the structure of the compound, whether you're using heat or not. Sometimes you don't even need heat. Um, and sometimes you can't isolate this beta hydroxy. If you're condensing two ketones, you can't isolate this, except in a very, very small amount, one, one two percent, something like that. So, um, and I'm missing my oxygen here. I've dropped my oxygen, so I'm going to go back and throw that on there. To drive this equilibrium, we dehydrate. So here, reaction is driven to completion by um, dehydration to form the alpha, beta, and saturated carbonyl. All right, so hopefully this summary um, gives you enough skills that you're going to be able to predict um, any condensation comp uh, products that I might put on midterm too, and or the final. Yes? It's, con it's going to be all conjugated. So when you draw the resonance structures here, this is highly resonance stabilized. <laughs> Yeah, so this is not these, yeah, they're not resonant stabilized before you deprotonate. Those two um, carbonyls are isolated. Here they're actually connected by deprotonating. Okay? All right. Yes? Did everybody hear his question? How do you decide whether you're going to go all the way to the alpha beta unsaturated? Um, one of two conditions, you're going to look for heat when you do the reaction, or if the double bond that you make is going to be conjugated with something else on the other side. So this double bond, if this is like a benzene ring or some sort of aromatic ring or extended conjugation, then you will get this without even heating it. It will happen at room temperature. All right, more questions. We have a few more name reactions to cover. So I guess um, all these guys that were doing this chemistry wanted to have reactions named after themselves. So the next reaction I want to talk about is the Michael reaction. The, the, the micro reaction is addition of an enolate to the double bond of an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. This reaction works especially well when the enolate is a stabilized enolate formed from a beta dicarbonyl compound. So let's see what this looks like. First, let me draw you the product. That's the product. And what, we do, what we're doing, I'll let me just show you what we're doing and then, we'll, and then we'll draw the mechanism. We're deprotonating this guy right here, which is a, a, a completely deprotonated by sodium ethoxide. And this is doing 1,4 addition. Okay, so that's where this is coming in. Here's the alpha beta. Here's alpha. Here's beta. This is attacking the beta position. So it's going to do 1,4 addition rather than 1,2 addition. And so let's look at what the mechanism looks like. Another possible mechanism. It's going to be hard to decide what mechanism to put on the test, huh? I know you have no sympathy for me, but it is difficult. You know, what they found is the more choices you have, the more stressful your life is. So maybe that's why I get so stressed out writing tests in a different way than you guys. 
Um, I'm, we, can push, we can push these electrons onto carbonyl. I'm going to just push it onto carbon here just for fun. We're going to remove that um, acidic hydrogen. And I'm going to actually flip this around in a more logical way so I can show the attack a little better. I should have, I should have drawn it the other way. We're going to go this way here. And now um, we're going to have electrons come and do 1,4 addition. We already know 1,4 addition. So really none of these steps are new here. Nucophile is going to attack in the 1,4 position. We're going to move these electrons over and up onto oxygen. Okay, and then scroll down a little bit here. This is a reaction where you're going to have to be very, very careful to count carbons. Just going to tell you that right now. Very easy to make a mistake. So you notice that once we attack that, um, when we do a 1,4 addition, we attack the carbonyl, um, we're going to get an enolate ion, so now we just need to protonate the enolate ion. All right, questions on that mechanism. Anybody? Just making a stabilized enolate. A stabilized enolate is attacking 1,4. We've already seen that reaction a couple times. So the electrophile is accepting the electron pair from the nucleophile. So um, let's label. This is donating, this is the nucleophile. Um, but this guy, Michael, did, was, not, was not satisfied to have the reaction named after him. He wanted, to react, he wanted to name the reactants after him also. So rather than nucleophile, this is the Michael donor. Okay. And this is the electrophile, which is really correctly called the Michael acceptor. All right, so the attacking nucleophile donates electron, a pair of electrons. It's a Michael acceptor. And um, so, and this is our stabilized enolate. This reaction works really well with uh, stabilized enolates. And this right here is 1,4 uh, or conjugate addition. 1,4 addition or conjugate addition is also called that. Of enolate to an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl and that reaction is the Michael. All right, so the product is a 1,5-dicarbonyl. So 
So this is another structural feature that you want to look for. Where do we mean by 1,5 dicarbonyl? Um, if we count from this carbonyl, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If we counted to this carbonyl, it would also be um, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yes. Excuse me? I wrote 1, 4. Why did I do that? 1, 5. So when you're drawing these, um, you're going to have to be on the lookout for counting, carb counting carbons here. Um, the, one, one way to do this um, so you don't make a mistake in the Michael is if you put this on a zigzag, the two carbonyls are going to be up. Okay? If you have one going down, you know you've made a mistake. The most common mistake is to lose a carbon here um, and have a 1,4 dicarbonyl like I just drew and I must have been anticipating, yeah, thinking that. Is it reversible? It doesn't tend to reverse, but um, let's see. It is technically reversible, yes. So we could worry about reversible arrows, but we're not going to worry about reversible arrows. All right, so um, some of the more common Michael donors and acceptors are on the next page. Let's take a look at them. So best, stabilized enolates. Here are some common Michael acceptors. Alpha, beta, unsaturated, all sorts of compounds including nitriles, conjugated nitriles, um, nitroethylene, so where the nitro group is conjugated. And you know what, if, you th if the nitro looks a little strange to you, if you draw it out, you can see how this is in the same family here. Okay, so here we have this nit nitrogen-oxygen bond which behaves kind of like a carbonyl in some ways, if you think of it that way. And same with the nitrile. So all of these are Michael acceptors. Uh, no, notice we have no alpha, beta, unsaturated carboxylic acid. Why would that be? What would happen if you mixed a Michael donor with an alpha beta unsaturated carboxylic acid? What would it do first? It would deprotonate the acid. Okay, so we don't have that. That doesn't work. So uh, not a Michael acceptor. Why a Michael donor will just deprotonate the carboxylic acid? What happens if our Michael donor is not a stabilized um, enolate? What's going to happen? What's a competing reaction? Why do we want to use stabilized enolates rather than unstabilized enolates, just regular enolates? Anybody know why that is? Well, remember, we always have that competition between the 1, 2, and the 1, 4, right? If we, um, if we have the stronger that um, nucleophile gets, the more it's going to attack 1, 2, right? The stronger the nucleophile, the more it attacks 1, 2. So we're talking about um, if we just have the enolate of a ketone here versus this one. Enolate of a ketone, ketone's about pKa20. That's a pretty strong, that's a pretty strong nucleophile. And so you're going to get a lot more attacking 1, 2. If you use a stabilized enolate, you pretty much get exclusive 1,4 attack. So that's why we want to use stabilized enolates in the Michael reaction. Stronger the base, um, the, the more 1,2 attack. And let me, sh let me look at your notes and I can show you what page I'm talking about. It helps to be able to go look at the page. So this would be the end of chapter 20.
page 31. Oh, wait. No, page 32. So all the strong nucleophiles attack 1, 2. And so the, st the stronger we do this, I, I messed up your page. Hopefully you can find it. Okay. All right. Stronger the nucleophile, the more 1, 2 attack. So that's why we want to use stabilize. The product of the microreaction may be treated like any other substituted malonic ester. Hydrolysis of the ester and decarboxylation leads to a, a gamma keto acid or a 1,5 dicarbonyl. What would that look like? Let's draw that. KOH water is going to do saponification of the ester. So we get the dicarboxylate. And then if we protonate H3O plus and heat and decarboxylate, we can get a gamma, gamma keto, um, gamma keto um, acid. Let's draw that for you. And we're going to also always double check whenever we do the Michael to make sure that we have the right number of carbons. Okay, so we're going to count here from one carbonyl to the next. Doesn't matter which way we start. One, two, three, four, five. One five dicarbonyl. And um, you can see where we get the gamma keto acid, alpha, beta, this is gamma. Oh, that's delta, sorry. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta. Delta keto acid. I've been saying that wrong the whole time. All right, questions on Michael reaction? More questions, anybody? All right, Michael addition in synthesis, retrosynthetic analysis. So I might say on the test, um, show me how you would make this compound using a Michael reaction. So we have steps to take it apart. But since it's Michael and it's a 1,5 dicarbonyl, we can start counting from either carbonyl. We're going to do both and we're going to pick the best synthesis. So if I said provide a synthesis of the following compound using a Michael reaction using the route that would give the best yield, that has been a previous test question. Will it be on midterm two? I don't know. Something like it maybe? I'm not sure. But could be. So break beta gamma bond. See, do you see how we could start counting from either one? And we're going to do both. And then we're going to make decisions about what we can do here. All right, so we'll start counting them this way here, starting from the second key uh, carbonyl, alpha, beta, gamma. And then down here, we'll start from the other one, alpha, beta, gamma. All right, so here's the steps. Break the beta gamma bond. Put a double bond in the alpha beta position. So you're going to put a double bond here. Put a negative charge in the gamma position. Now, and then we're going to look at it and see if these are actually going to work or how we're going to make them work. Okay? So once we do that, let me just turn, let me make this a solid line. I think that looks a little better. Let's just make that a solid line. Let's take that apart. So that would be. Now, just because you can take it apart doesn't mean it's something that's going to work. So we're going to take a look. I'm going to draw both of these, and then we'll take a look and see which we think is going to work. So that would be that one. If we did this strategy, it would be this plus
And if you are a person who tends to lose carbons, I recommend putting um, carbons at the ends of these pie systems rather than using skeletal. So something like that will make you less likely to do that. So let's just throw a little CH2 on here. All right, and we'll call the first strategy, strategy A. And we'll call the second strategy, strategy B. Let's see if we can make A work. Uh, first things first, um, this looks like a perfectly decent Michael acceptor. Uh, can we make this compound? Can we make the enolate of a carboxylic acid? No, that's an impossible compound. Okay, so even though we took it apart, we can't use that. However, um, we could use a synthetic equivalent to that. <clears throat> so impossible, I don't know where I'm pointing there, impossible compound. So we have a synthetic equivalent, something we can use instead that we can manipulate and turn into essentially that. It's going to work just like that, but it's actually something we can make, not an impossible compound. All right, so um, if we started with this instead, um, that would be um, a stabilized enolate. That's going to add really nicely to here, and then after we do the 1, 4 addition, we can hydrolyze the esters and decarboxylate, and we have essentially added on this piece. Okay, so this is what we call a synthetic equivalent. Let me label that. So if you have something that's impossible to make, you want to try some, to make something that's, that's going to behave similarly, but wouldn't, you, won't, you won't have to make something that's impossible to make. All right, what is the, what, do we see a, pro, a problem with B, strategy B? What's the problem with B? I'm seeing a problem with this. What do you think? Didn't we say on the previous page that you couldn't have an alpha beta unsaturated carboxylic acid in the Michael reaction? Yeah, so this is just going to deprotonate the carboxylic acid. Rather than adding 1,4, it's just going to deprotonate the carboxylic acid. All right, so um, this guy right here. will deprotonate the carboxylic acid. So what we, one thing we could do to make, to make strategy B work is that we could convert this into an ester, then we could do the 1,4 addition and then we could hydrolyze the ester. That would work. Um, but is this going to be a good Michael reaction? No, why not? That's not a stabilized enolate. Okay, so we want the strategy that's going to work the best. So this is the strategy that we're going to use. Instead of using this compound, we're going to use a synthetic equivalent, which is an active methylene stabilized enolate. We're going to do 1,4 addition. Then we're going to hydrolyze both esters, decarboxylate, and we'll be able to get, uh, make good yield of the comp our desired compound. So let's see what that would look like. All right, and, 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 the, and we're going to throw everything together. The sodium ethoxide, the fastest reaction that can occur is deprotonation of that active methylene position. So we don't have to do this even stepwise. We can just throw everything together. If you want to deprotonate completely and then add the um, Michael acceptor, you can also do that. Both ways would get, give you full credit.
And here's where we're going to have to get really careful here about doing too many carbons. One, two, three, four, five. So it should be five from both of these carbonyls. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so then we're going to hydrolyze and decarboxylate H3O plus H2O and heat, or you can do it two step KOH, water, heat, and then H3O plus heat as a second step. And that will take you to um, <clears throat> the desired product. Let's draw that. Every step of the way, we're going to make sure that we um, count carbons. One, two, three, four, five. One five dicarbonyl. Question. Why is that not? Say that one more time. <coughs> hydrolysis of an ester, I always have heat. If you do acid catalyzed hydrolysis of an ester or base, base you need heat, heat for both. Okay? All right. More questions? That would be a tricky test question, huh? All right, we have another name reaction, just what we wanted. And that's the Michael reaction followed by aldol. I guess the aldol guy was pretty humble, or maybe his name was aldol. I doubt it, though. <laughs> he didn't want a reaction named after him. He should have, though. All right, Robinson annulation is a Michael reaction followed by an aldol. All right, and pretty remarkable the product that we're going to achieve in all in one, in one pot here. That's the product that you'll get. So let's go through the mechanism. We'll do um, the Michael part, and then we're going to do the aldol on the next page. So um, if I, I have put this mechanism on test before, this would be like sort of uh, two mechanisms in one. It would be a Michael mechanism and then an aldol. Of course, this is going to work really nicely because we have an active methylene compound for our Michael donor. And just to go back and forth here, I'm going to move electrons onto oxygen this time. Again, you have your choice, oxygen or carbon. What I find is that uh, most students, when they get to this chapter, push electrons onto carbon because it's just a little bit easier to see um, products that you're forming. Okay, so we're going to do one four addition here. Electrons on oxygen come down. We're going to attack one four. So it's going to look like that. And every step of the way, I'm going to check the number of carbons. All right, so we still have one, two, three, four, five. And now we're going to protonate with water.
and we're going to check one more time. One, two, three, four, five. One, five dicarbonyl. And um, notice we have, and we're going to throw heat here, and I want to make a point about this, how I'm going to clue you in, in knowing whether we should stop at the Michael or continue with the Aldol. If I want to do the Michael, um, if I want to do the Robinson annulation, which is Michael followed by Aldol, I'm going to show heat there. Um, so, and we're going to say that you can, without heat, can stop here. All right. Yes. Oh, I did the wrong thing here. Thank you. Let's fix that. I was making a very nice enol there, but that's not what we want to do, okay? Like that. Thank you for pointing that out. All right. So that's the Michael edition. Now let's do the aldol, intramolecular aldol. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove um, the acidic hydrogen here. The reason we remove that hydrogen is because that will give us a six-membered ring. Do we want to go on to carbon or oxygen? I heard more carbons, okay. Oops, I drew that wrong. Now look at that, it just put it right back there. How about that? The file's getting really large and it doesn't like it when it gets really large. <sighs> okay, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, so we have the electrons on carbon. Let's draw that. We're going to attack one of the two carbonyls. Does not matter which. I'm going to probably have to stick with one color now because it doesn't like to change after it gets really large. Okay, yes? Let's draw the intermediate and then we'll stop right there because it's time. Let's just draw that so we, I don't forget to draw it next time. Okay, so that's what it looks like after that step. We will continue at that point on Friday.